Hey people, Onyx again. I was on two radio shows today. And uh, the topic of race came up. Every time I try to ask direct questions about race to some white people, some black people, they always tend to give me these deflective answers to shut me up or just try to calm me down or look like as if they're the more righteous one than me and I'm trying to race bait. I'm asking very simple and fair questions. I try to uh, simplify it and just give them just a, 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 a scenarios or just ask a very articulate, specific question. And I get all these little divergent answers, which they try to allude as, um, or pass off as uh, a sufficient answer to my question that's very specific, which they do not answer at all. <clears throat> See, the thing is, when you give answers, like there's only one race, the human race, we all bleed red. We're all part of one family. We have a black president. Those are all bullshit ass terms. I'll get to that in a second. I present this to some white people, some black people. Most black people get it. You have those that fight it. Hmm. A lot of white people tend to steer and shy away. I don't try to get them into a corner. But, and I do give them an out of the conversation. I try to say it calmly like this. But those so few know what the hell I'm talking about. Probably better than they let on. But the thing is, me as a black person trying to talk about race, <clears throat> Sometimes I may sound racist because I'm talking about race and questioning and examining and challenging the very idea of it, which is the worst concepts that human beings have ever put upon this planet as a species forced upon this entire species. It's, it, we, we could have done without it. <laughs> Caused a lot of grief, a lot of genocide, a lot of confusion, a lot of bigotry. Clearly a human concept that does not need to be... Uh, that could be removed from the human psyche. And it's more, more ancient, but simple, but also devastating parent colorism. Racism comes with colorism, go hand in hand, but colorism goes from, racism comes from colors. Colorism is as much older than race. But here's the thing. I'm from California. And I'm also from the Bay Area. The Bay Area, you know, home of San Francisco, San Francisco Giants, uh, the Golden Gate Bridge, the Castro, San Francisco, you know. I don't need to be told about diversity, multiculturalism, or racial harmony. See, the thing is, you can't tell me anything about that because I'm well versed in it. I've met people of many different religions, uh, denominations of the same religions, races, creeds, colors, and even, even different ethnicities of my race. Hell, different people of social e economic backgrounds. I'm very well aware there are people of the same race, but their social views, political views, and geopolitical positions are all different in the white community, the black community, the Hispanic, Southeast Asian, East Asian, Arab, and everything else in between. Mixed race people, in particular, of all mixtures, they're different as well. And I met them and I built and connect and I grew up around them. I love culture, I love diversity, and I love learning about new things. So I don't need to be told that I need to stop thinking about race and just accept people as people. I do. You can't tell me anything. And in some cases, I know that better than you. So who are you trying to school? You know nothing. What you don't know is that you righteous bastards who take so much pride in your racial harmony and diversity. 
is because three years ago, I was 26 then. And I say this a lot. I was listening to Tariq Ali. He said before the 1600s, no one called themselves black, white, Asian, Mexican, Hispanic, Latino, all that, all those new terms, those new colonial imperialistic terms to classify people by what they look like, not their culture or the content of the character. Um, I started to question race. I had so many different questions and started to dig and ask other questions and ask white people and black people and everyone else between. What we people who say we're so socially aware and so conscious is that, and I started to realize that I was ignorant to the fact that not everyone wanted racial harmony and integration. I live in the world today that some people hate integration. They don't want to be around the, uh, another kind, another kind of people. They want to be their own kind of people. They want to be around their people. And they hate having to be around the next person, tolerate them. I accept the fact that they feel that way, even though I don't like it. And I'm kind of disappointed in the fact that, you know, two people are different and we can't build and connect. But I'm not going to force someone to be around me if they don't want to be. I don't like to go where I'm not wanted. And particularly in America, on social media, there are white and black people that feel that way. And I found this out by just by looking at the comic section of YouTube. When I started to look at African, African scholars, um, their videos and the speeches, and there would be a lot of hate speech by white people and black people. I'm going back and forth. And you know what I discovered? In both the black and white community, there's a large... Mm, I'd say semi-silent. Hmm. There's a large semi-silent majority of the conscious community, of the conscious community, not the whole black community. The, there's a large majority of the conscious community. And it, in that community, I would say amongst that conscious group that expressed their views about race, some of them are very, I, I can't, I'm rather to say they're racist because they don't have any power, but they have mentality. They have this black supremacist-ish, because they're not supreme over everything, this black supremacist-ish view. Their mentality is they wish they could be reigning over supreme of all other races, and they look at other races who have less melanin than I do as inferior their view is, which often, I, I, I'm not even making this up, you can go look this on, you know, that the black man is God and the white man is the devil or the black woman is God and everyone else, everyone else is inferior and black men are degenerate women and all that stuff, that, that melanoid, melanoid superiority, but yet they have no power to back up their claims and, you know, those false beliefs, which is only a reaction to another false belief called what we know, which people in the conscious community and among probably amongst people of color call white supremacy. I don't know the basic idea of white supremacy, but I do understand I've seen enough comp racist comments that these, um, I call them keyboards clansmen. There are tons of, uh, now please understand what I'm saying can be confirmed on the comments of YouTube the the when any video talks about race mixing culture ethnicity interracial dating anything to do with race culture and ethnicity especially black and white black and white or white issues or black issues and anything like that there's a lot of racist supremacist talk in the white sector and the black sector of youtube but also facebook and twitter and instagram and all that and message boards and comment sections Stormfront and Nigamania would be one of them. Those two websites, kind of a, I guess, a supremacist website. <laughs> um, uh, but even on the white side, I, I've seen, I've talked to some um, 
in, in the comment section, some white people that have some strong racialist views who there's, there's a, uh, hundreds upon thousands of white Americans on social media, not all, and I want to say not all think this way, but there's too many to where it's where you can think there's dozens upon hundreds upon tens of hundreds of thousands. I don't know if the millions, but it, it's it's to where it's where it's too damn many people who are silently living the day by day, probably going on hopping on message boards, uh, comment sections of different social media websites who do not like diversity, who see race mixing as bad, who see it as uh, horrible and an extinction or the, a form of genocide of the race. These particular types of white people with that mentality do not like integration, do not like diversity, do not like multiculturalism. They want to stick with their own kind and and if they want to stick with their own kind that's fine i just have a problem when they want when they want to spew their hatred and force me to believe it if they want to be proud to be themselves proud to be white want to be part of their own want to be just around white people that's fine but this is to all the unconscious ignorant righteous people who th pride themselves on racial diversity and their ability to connect with another person please understand that not everyone feels this way or even likes it black or white and when we talk about race issues you need to deal with the fact that not everyone wants to be around people different from themselves you can't always deal with the you can't always deal with the fact that you think the whole world and you see your and you think you're so above racism in America. You are not. Whether you're white or black, none of you are above it. None of us, including Freddie. Which is me. But Freddie Onyx, whatever. I'm gonna go by Onyx. Including Onyx, me. See, we live in an institutionalized society to where race is programmed in our heads through literature. Radio, music videos, TV, and movies. We get programmed to think in some ways inferior of ourselves and then superior, and then, or I get programmed if, in a superiority complex. It affects each race and culture in America differently. Some have a superiority complex, others have an inferiority complex. Some have a fear, some have a hatred of another group. We stay in Western civilization. Unfortunately, it got a lot of, they have a dirty stain of racism wherever there's a, there tends to be Western influence. I don't know, whatever. It just is what it is. But the thing is, you need to deal. Those people who think they're so above racism, you are not, you cannot get past it, especially if it's in your laws, if it's in your food, if it's in, uh, if it's in, uh, your news, basically everywhere where there's information being thrown in your face, orally or visually or, or anywhere, there's a scent of racism, even when the people's reactions and mental programming, you are not above it. Because if you meet racially biased people, we, they are, I say, they're anywhere and everywhere. You are not above it. And you need to deal with the fact that it is a serious issue in America. Oh, you self-righteous people. Oh, I have a white girlfriend. Oh, my mom's half black. Uh, no fool. You may be strong enough to shake the mental programming. But what about the rest of your people? Wherever, whatever group, whether you be black or white, sorry, it affects you. You're just the strong one. There's some weak-minded weak motherfuckers out here, white and black, that believe that this race is pure and that race is inferior, or the black race is pure or the white race is fair. I'm sorry, but there's a lot of people in social media that spew their hatred on there, and you act like it's a small minority. Oh, trust me, there is a whole group, groups of groups that you don't even know about. They go to work every day, 
probably got them in your family don't know it. If you do, you sure as hell don't act like it ain't there. You want to see it as, oh, they just grew up in a time where it was prejudice. No, they, no, they just, we should feel sorry for them. No, sometimes they're just comfortable with their racial biases and bigotry. Okay? Black people, some black people on these airwaves of, of, of radio and the internet think they're superior, even though they ain't got no power. Wish they could want to be some black supremacists, but they can't because they have no power. And, you know, seldomly, I, some of my own white friends that I've grown up with, they have, in some roundabout ways, have admitted that they were taught to be kind of racist or stick with their own kind. And, and blatantly, one or two will say, hey, I used to be part of this group where I was taught to hate you and not trust black people. Yes. See, racism is more complex now, and it's a silent monster. It's a snake. It's not this big bulldog that says, get out of here, I hate you, the color of your skin, I'm superior. No, it's not. So get off your ass. I don't care if you stay in LA. I don't care if you stay in a metropolitan area. I don't care if you stay in New York. I don't care if you stay in, um, 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 the Bay Area. I don't care if you stay in Japan. I don't care if you've been all around the world. Stop trying to deal with what you think is right and what is and what could be and deal with the ugly too. Race is here. America has a dirty stand of racism, racial genocide, racial bigotry, and the denial of the truth. And you need to be part of the problem I mean, you need to be part of the people that want to solve the problem and ask the questions and do something about it. Or at least be part of the pack if you in a pack of people that at least choose not to get in the way of others who are trying to do something and solve the race problem in this country. You're not helping by acting like there is no racism. We have a black president. If black people in higher positions are still complaining about race and be called racial epithets to the point where it seems kind of threatening their life, there's a race problem. Black people were not being hung and lynched and hated even up till now because they got money. Okay? People of color in this country are not immune to racism. Hell. Even white people get death. White people that want to solve the race issue, those liberals and some of those liberals and some of those anti-white activists, you or not anti-white, those anti-racist activists, excuse me. The white people, the righteous white people that want to get the race problem solved and have racial solidarity, they get death threats by neo-Nazis and, and, and Aryan Nation members and Ku Klux Klan members and even and even get under and, and even get like criticism, probably even death threats from other black people because they don't believe those white people are actually trying to do something right to solve the race problem. Yes, I do acknowledge. I know there's probably some white people that we don't know that really want to help and 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 help in the curing of a mental disease called race and color. And they go unseen, they go unheard, and I acknowledge that too. Yeah, there are there's some very righteous white people out there. So, but they go unheard. And there's black people say the same thing. Black people want to solve the race problem. Now, the difference is the white people speak on race. They make a living off it, but they get death threats. But the black people speak out against race and stand up to racial uh, institution, institutionalized racism. They get killed for it. Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, Marcus Garvey, they all get shot. So no, if people still getting shot today for even mentioning it or being criticized. Yes, there is a race problem. So all you righteous, oh, I'm, I can connect, I'm sorry, but get off your ass. That, that, that motherfucker, you, you, you go to work every day too, that, that, that's your neighbor, he may not want to be around you like you want to be around him. Please understand that. Deal with the ugliness. Spit in the face and punch in the face. Don't act, don't try to put a, Lemons and flowers over ugly. Get rid of it. Unacceptable.